Building and gluing and assembling is fun. It really is. But one of my absolute favorite parts of a customized project is paint. So, in this video, we're going to go over how we're going to apply the main colors for this using rattle cans, maybe some gun to markers, and a little bit of hand painting. Strap in, let's see what we can do. Hello everyone, welcome to Shelf Space. I'm your host, Rodimus13, and today we are going to start painting this custom figure. We've got everything assembled. He looks pretty darn cool even without paint if I do say, my, say so myself. And yes, and now the only thing that is left is to get some color on him. So I've already gone ahead and figured out what I want this to look like. I use Photoshop to do what's called a digibash. At least that's what they called it back in the day. And basically I just recolored a photograph of this with an approximation of the colors I want. And I'll show it somewhere around here for a bit. You looking at it? You looking at it? Hopefully I can actually put this in. It'll be real embarrassing if I don't. Okay, it's gone. So, in order to paint this, we're going to need paint, which we got. We're going to be using some rattle cans, or spray paint. In this case, did you really just do that? Really? Set you aside where you can stop causing trouble. In this case, we're going to be using just some Rust-Oleum metallic paint for primary color, some Rust-Oleum silver, well actually it's aluminum colored, I kind of like it, and I have this Velspar, which sadly doesn't exist anymore, and it's horrible because this is a really great spray paint brand of this sort of uh, kind of yellowish green color. And that's going to be it for the main colors. We'll be doing some hand painting later on to add a little bit more detail onto it. So the other part of what we need, and we'll just set you aside because you're being problematic is this. So this right here, the part that I'm touching is just two pieces of like foam board duct tape together. And I use it to hold these things. And this is just an alligator clip on a bamboo skewer that's been just duct taped together. I, that's literally all I did. I got the alligator clips from like Lowe's, but you can get it from just about any uh, hardware store and the bamboo skewer I just got from Kroger, a, a grocery store. The, and then to put them in, you just stab them through there. I have some set up with the with the little clip on them, and then I have some that are just straight up the uh, the sticks because uh, sometimes I, all I need to do is just kind of pop them on the top. So now we got all our stuff together. What we need to do, get this guy taken apart so that way we can easily paint him. And bam, parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these parts and put them on these alligator clips. You don't have to worry too much about a kit like the Leo because it's designed symmetrically. So we're not doing anything weirdly asymmetrical with the, um, with the uh, color scheme. And the asymmetrical parts that are on it now because of the customization, I know where they're going. So all we got to do is start clipping things on. So you take it, find usually an inconspicuous place, usually inside the part or a part that you know is going to be covered, clip it, put it on your thing, and you're done. If it's something that you can't easily clip, then you just find a stick that's pointy on one end. And you can do that. And that'll work just fine. Now, some more movie magic, and we'll have all these ready to go. And bam! Sorta. 
as you can see, I got several of the parts all clipped up and ready to go, but I still have lots of parts left over. I don't have quite enough alligator clips to uh, paint everything all in one go. So what I'm doing right now is just focusing on the feet and legs. We're going to go Voltron style here. Anyway, let's get these guys outside and start painting. Weather like this, probably not the best time to paint. It's cold, it's dark, it's damp, and I'm pretty sure Pyramid Head is going to jump out of the fog here and rip off my skin if I don't go back inside soon. When it's time to paint, it's a good idea to have good weather for it. You're going to want to paint outside because it's not a good idea to use rattle cans in the in inside. So it's nice to have a day like this. So I'm going to step in front of the camera now. Now we're going to start painting. So I still got everything all racked up like I showed you earlier. You'll probably notice that I have two rows here. And that's mostly because I got these are for one set of colors and these are another just to help keep it straight for me right now we're gonna be doing silver and that sort of yellow lime green color that I was talking about before and this is gonna be sort of the more inner parts as well as some of the thrusters and this is gonna be the legs and the upper arms one fun bit here is this can feels a little light so I'm hoping I'll have enough fortunately though this is stuff that I can easily get at Walmart. That's the thing about painting. You could spend a lot of money and get Tamiya paints online or from Hobby Town or wherever. But if you're on a budget, these work fine too. Well, this one, not as much because it's no longer made and a lot of the cans now go for lots of money online. It makes me sad. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so we'll just start off with a small one. I'm gonna shake our can vigorously. You'll notice I am wearing gloves. That's just to prevent the paint from getting all over my hands. It's spray paint, so it's not necessarily going to hurt you, but you don't want to get your hands all colored and stuff. Just wouldn't it be cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna hold the piece out, hold the can like so, and do quick motions over it. Just quick light coats. Try to stay out of the way of the, uh, the fumes and the uh, paint as it flies off. Let's see. Taking a look at it to make sure that everything looks pretty nice. No spots missing. Don't know how well you guys can see it because I can barely see the screen in this light. But I'm fairly happy with how that looks. So, 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 I got everything all painted up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these probably sit outside for a little bit because the weather is still pretty good for this. Let them dry. And then I will probably, uh, may actually assemble the legs as they are. Actually, no, no, no. I'll hit them with uh, some top coat, get them assembled, and then move on to the next parts. So stay tuned for all that stuff. Okay, so now we're going to do some masking. What that means is we're going to use some special tape like these to uh, cover up areas that we don't want to get painted so we can add a second color. So like on the Leo helmet, you see how everything is all green right now? Well, I actually still want this to be two colors. So I'm going to mask off the green areas so that way I can paint over this part and this part with a different color. To do that we're going to use some of this uh, Tamiya masking tape. Stuff is pretty handy. It's designed specifically for model kits and it comes in a variety of sizes. I don't know what size this is off the top of my head. Six millimeter maybe? So works kind of like a tape dispenser and then you see if we can get this on camera just carefully lay it down over the area that you don't want to get repainted 
This can be a little tricky, but the result, the end results are always very good, I think. May take a little bit of practice, though. And sometimes even after you get it down, you still have to go in and nudge it ever so slightly. And once you get it down, you want to kind of press it a little bit with like your finger or a Q-tip or something like that. Uh, a buddy of mine even suggests using something like, uh, I think he calls it Future, to help uh, seal off the edges. I have yet to go that far, mainly just because I don't have the stuff. Again, this is how I do it. Thus, you know, the name of the series. So other bigger, badder Gunpla YouTubers may have some different ways of doing this. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Get some more out. Oh, got too much, but that's okay. What you can do is just lay it down. Use your handy dandy hobby knife. Peel it up and Try again. You do want to make sure that you are covering everything that you do not want to get covered with paint. I can speak good. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, got away from me there for a second. Okay. Fortunately, this has a lot of nice straight lines. So masking this off is not that difficult. The hardest part is just this curved part here. This part is going to be a little tricky just because it is tiny. Can I put this up here? Sort of use it as a guide and see if I can get a piece trimmed off in the right dimensions. And that didn't work. <laughs> try, try again. Let's try it along a longer axis. And instead of trying to use my fingernail, let's use the hobby knife itself to peel it up. There we go. And now I'm just going to pop this down here. That's the ticket. Look at that. Good stuff. Good stuff. One year later. So that took a little bit longer than I thought. Got distracted with other projects. Anyway, so now we got everything all masked up. And I actually have them all kind of separated by the uh, colors that I'm going to be painting. So right here we got silver, the uh, light green that we'll be doing, the dark metallic green. And then these are going to be uh, either black or gray. So now we just need to uh, take them out and get them painted. Bring them back in to dry. And then we should be pretty close to getting everything finally fully assembled and ready for some hand painting. Okay, so as you can see, I've already started peeling off the masking tape. So I'm using gloves so I don't mess up the paint, at least not as much. And I'm going to try to use tools primarily to just slowly and carefully 
peel off the layers of tape. And there's quite a few on them on this, so this is going to take a little bit of time. But I will admit there is something satisfying about slowly peeling all this away. So I'm going to do this, and then we'll see how everything came out. And here it is. And I got to say, it came out pretty good. I'm actually very, very pleased with how this came out. There's a few blushes, blushes, <laughs> a few little marks here and there where the paint uh, got past the masking or I didn't mask well enough, but I am super happy overall. I think this is going to look really cool once we get everything all together. Masking came out pretty good in other areas too. The helmet looks really good and this came out pretty decent as well. So as you can see, I have pretty much all the stuff uh, painted. So now I'm going to make sure everything is kind of dry. And then I think I'm going to hit everything with some glossy top coat. Let that dry and then do assembly. I am really, really excited. It's all coming together now. So quick little detail. This isn't technically related to the painting, but it's a step that I'm taking at this point. So you can see I have this uh, sticker material. I believe this was left over from the V2 weapon set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a portion of the silver material here and put it on this piece so that way it goes behind this lens. And what that's going to do is give it a sort of glowy effect. Uh, this is a technique that I used on the uh, uh, Fire Dance Leo. And it's another uh, thing that I picked up from Shoki over at Shoki Reviews. And here it is. Pretty cool looking, right? Our job isn't quite done yet, though. We still need to do hand painting and weathering. But I think we'll save that for the next video. For now, let's take a look at what we've done. We've modified the head for articulation. We've created a custom mounting bracket here on the shoulder for the sword. We've created an entirely new custom shield with its own little wire gimmick. Wire is up over there. We've made a backpack as well as modifying the back of the Leo to accommodate this style of backpack mounting. And of course, as you can see, we've painted everything. There's still little touch-ups that need to be done here and there. Uh, some silver here has rubbed off because it just took me way too long to work on this thing. But we got the end in sight, and so I think things are going to start moving a lot faster now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Uh, don't forget to check the description below for links to my storefront where you can get official shelf space t-shirts and more. And yeah. Thank you again, and I'll see you the next time you invade my shelf space.